What's up, beautiful people? Hope you're having an amazing day today. One of our most popular episodes has been on how to grow an audience on Instagram. So in this episode, I'm gonna review some submissions for my Instagram carousel clinic and give some pointers on what I think is working and what can be improved. Before we begin, I wanna thank Later for sponsoring this video. And if you're wondering how you can get your work critiqued, attend one of my workshops. I'll provide links to upcoming workshops in the description below. There were way more submissions than what I can reasonably critique. So with Mark's help, we select the ones with the greatest learning opportunities. This doesn't mean that they were the best or the worst, just ones that I could provide meaningful feedback to. Having said that, we've broken the critiques into two episodes. So without further ado, this is the Instagram critique episode one. Here are the five criteria that I'm looking at. First, is it clear or is it confusing? Can I tell what's going on? Is there too much happening on, on the screen? Two, after looking at this, do I feel empty or is it fulfilling? It's the whole idea of, are you giving me something or are you taking away my time? This is critical. Next, I'll be looking at any kind of typesetting no-nos and ways in which you've broken certain typography rules and if you have any typos or grammar. Number four, I'm going to be looking at whether or not the design decisions that you made actually support the concept. So if you picked an image of a person screaming, but the words and the messaging is supposed to be about calming, maybe that's a disconnect. And lastly, I'll be looking at the X factor, the special sauce, if you will. What are you doing to make it uniquely your own? It could be the colors, the topography, the way you illustrate or add images, or some kind of neat in-between interframe things that you're doing to link up and create seamless carousels. Let's take a look at now who we have first. So first up is Daniel. First, of all, I'm gonna just go through this. I'm gonna kind of study it a little bit and then I'll comment as I go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna read this. How to overcome anxiety in just 20 seconds. One thing you need to do to get out of emotional distress, whether you're getting upset about a certain situation or with a certain person, getting nervous before a big performance, or even having trouble falling asleep. It'll take 20 seconds to get your feet back on the ground. Ready? Take a deep breath for four seconds, hold it for seven, and exhale for eight. Repeat this up to four times. This breathing helps to slow down your heartbeat, calm your nervous system, release the feel-good chemical, aka endorphin, which then makes you feel relaxed and confident. Please share this content if you find it useful. Okay, Daniel, I think overall you did a pretty good job. There's a couple things I'm noticing. The first thing I'm spotting right away is you're not using the proper dimensions. I can see that it's a little narrower than it needs to be, so that's an easy fix, so make sure you do that. I'm gonna make some small comments here about in terms of the flow of the copy. As I'm reading through it, it doesn't flow as well as it should and just some small tweaks. So one tip for you is to do literally what I just did is to read your own carousels out loud because the way you write and the way you speak is different and you wanna make it sound natural when you're speaking, okay? So how to overcome anxiety in just 20 seconds? I like that, that's a attention grabbing headline. It's a clear promise of what it's gonna do, overcome anxiety and a timeline, so 20 seconds. That sounds like it's it's a good appeal or benefit to me as, as the uh, reader of your content. And I'm, I'm also noticing this hand that seems like it's being chained up. It makes sense when you swipe over to the right because now the right hand is breaking that chain. So it's kind of breaking out of something that's holding you back. I like that and, and the thinking seems pretty clear. So one thing you need to do to get out of emotional distress, and I struggle with this stuff. Sometimes when you're using multiple slides to chain a singular thought together, I like to use commas or, or ellipses. So one thing that you need to do to get out of emotional distress, probably comma, whether you're getting upset about a certain situation. See, in here, Daniel's added a comma. So what I would do here is possibly make this a lowercase w, so it's a continuation of the previous slide. And I like how he's used a smaller uh, point size and parentheses or with a certain person to kind of communicate that idea. Getting nervous before a big performance. Again, lowercase g probably. Or even having trouble falling asleep. So this kind of ends in a funny way. So. Let me, let me start this again. How to overcome anxiety in just 20 seconds. One thing you need to do to get out of emotional distress, whether you're getting upset about a certain situation, getting nervous before a big performance, or even having trouble falling asleep. Usually you wanna say is after this and give me the answer, but it, it's a little funny. 
It'll only take 20 seconds, which you already told me up front, to get your feet back on the ground. Ready? So I feel like right now he's doing what a lot of us will do is you have 10 slides to fill and maybe not all the content can live on 10 slides. But instead of having this slide and this slide, perhaps take this slide and break this across three frames. So have take a deep breath for four seconds on one slide. And then the next slide would be hold it for seven and exhale for eight. And then repeat this four times. Because really, this feels like filler content to me. This breathing helps to slow down your heartbeat. I, I think this is really important. I'm seeing a couple of things here. So I'm going to talk about typography for a second here. When you're indenting in from a, from a numbered list like this, I think you have to be careful about putting too little space or too much space. And I think in this particular instance, I think you may have increased the space to be out a little bit too far. So I would reduce that down by about half because you still want to make the connection that the one and the slow, the word slow is closer than the one to the number two because proximity tells us relationship. So the closer something is together, you're saying to the reader, this is important, these ideas are connected. Now, there's all this little mouse text on the bottom here where you're sourcing your, your uh, content from, which I applaud you for doing. It's just way too small, way too much information. I think you're okay just crediting the source of somebody, uh, Corliss J in 2015, and the name of the book or something like that, and not actually provide the link. People can't access the link anyways in Instagram carousel, so there's really no point, all right? And the other thing I noticed is, which then makes you feel relaxed, I think, with an ED and confident, but I'm not sure. So go check your source again, see how they spelled it, and just make sure that the grammar is right. Now, English is a second language for me, so I'm no grammar Nazi here, okay? So uh, just double check your sources there. And then please share this content if you find it useful. I like that this last slide, your call to action slide, is simple, has a picture of you, but here's some things to think about. One, does this picture in any way capture your personal brand? Does it convey a sense of who you are and what you stand for. So I would suggest maybe a pose or an accessory or something that instantly conveys who you are. Notice I'm wearing this hat, so this says something about who I am. Obviously, there's some connection between God and design. So if, if you can do that, that'll make it you more memorable, and that's the whole point of this anyways. A couple other little things here scrolling through this, I noticed the icons that you're using and the way that you're treating the colors is not consistent from image to image. Now, this is totally okay if you're using a lot of different colors, but when they're close, it has to be right on. It's that little annoying OCD thing that designers do and say, that's a little bit off and it's going to mess people up. Okay, so this has a slight blue duotone to it, not perfectly gray, and I can see that. I think this is gray, this fire, and then this microphone has a blue tint to it. And so, you know, from icon to icon, let's just make sure they're consistent. And this is throwing me off. The last little thing I want to comment on is this at the bottom. This is the DR logo, which I assume is your uh, your logo. But it's a little big, it's a little bold, it's a little prominent, and it's drawing more attention to it than I think you want. So I would suggest doing something much simpler with your logo. Maybe even just typeset it. It doesn't need to be your logo because I don't think it's adding a whole lot to it anyways. The last thing you want to do is have the detail type at the bottom be distracting and pull us away from reading the message. All right, I hope that's helpful. Overall, really good job. It's super clean. It's very clear. I get the message and I think there's a good takeaway here. If I'm dealing with stress and anxiety, learning to breathe and being present and getting in tune with my body and calming me down, I think that's a good thing. So it's giving me some value here. Good job. All right, so next up is from Keith. Let's look at what Keith has done. So five reasons we buy more things than we need. All right. It's not just about sales, offers, and clever ads. Everyone's a sucker for a bargain. That's true. I'm guilty of that. It's time to get emotional. Okay. One, we think it will make us happy. Two, social pressure and the need to impress others. Three, lack of control. You just want to buy everything. Four, we're envious of other people and things they own. Five, you're bored. We've all been there. It's okay. We don't buy things. We buy how things make us feel. Purchases are emotional, so next time you're shopping, ask yourself, do I really need this? And then here's this call to action. What's your most outrageous 
purchase due to one of these reasons. Comment below. Love the Edge team. All right, let's review this here. So I have to say, we uh, this is where is it? Here we go. So five reasons we buy more things than we need. Okay. All right, all right. So he's like, it, it'll make us happy. Uh, there's pressure for us to do it, and the feel to uh, the need to impress other people. And that we just want to buy everything so if we've lost control and we're envious of other people. So these are not very good reasons to buy anything or to do anything, as a matter of fact. Okay? Or you're bored, so you just buy stuff, okay? So we don't buy things. We buy how things make us feel. Purchases are emotional, so next time you're shopping, ask yourself, do I really need this? Yeah, but we don't always buy the things that we need. We buy some things just because we want them. This is this pose is a little confusing for me. I think that you're on to like a really good idea here. I'm just not so sure that the messaging is as clear as it needs to be. I'm not sure if you're trying to tell us not to buy things or to buy things or to become aware of things or how to trigger other people to buy things. So there's a lot that's packed in here. I think what you want to do is be very clear as to what you want people to think and feel after reading something like this. Uh, there's a couple other things I want to point out. Okay, let's do this. Uh, first thing I notice is as I'm scrolling through your Instagram feed, I'm noticing the type at the bottom. It's not consistent. It's shifting a little bit. You'll notice there, you see it on the right there, it's shifting. There's really no reason for it to do that. If you're using a template, it should stick. And it needs to. So maybe you accidentally nudged it. This happens to me too. But if you set up a template uh, with master pages, this will never happen to you. Okay. I want to also comment a little bit uh, now that I talked about the messaging of this. I think overall, smart choice in terms of typeface and color palettes. I think it's fun. It's very pleasing to the eye. Even though you have a lot going on, I, I think uh, the, the illustration style is actually very well suited for this. I think the addition of this brush script typeface is throwing me off a little bit. It's a little hard to read, but I guess that's part of the brand. So if that's what it is, then go for it. But I honestly think you could just do, uh, just use the same typeface as you're using or something much simpler because we don't want the legibility of the typeface to interfere with our reading of the message itself. And I think that's important. Okay, so if you've if you made these illustrations, good job. I think that's a definite strength. Uh, and if you didn't, I think you found an illustration style that is fairly consistent across it. So good job on that. Now, when you get to uh, slide nine, I think this is feeling really heavy. There's a lot going on here, and you kind of have to remember. I guess uh, if, if there's any point you, that you can include lots of messaging, it would be here in slide nine. But what I would suggest here is potentially reducing the number of point sizes you use to align left and rag right instead of doing a centered copy. Use fewer colors and maybe use one typeface. Because right now you're using, let's see here, three different point sizes, two different colors, and two different fonts to deliver three pieces of information. That is a lot. This is usually the summary, the key takeaway. So make this super clean. I would simplify this a lot. And again, I want to emphasize this. If you're using body copy or, or body text, you should probably use upper and lower case and not all caps. All caps, harder to read, especially when it's centered, multiple point size, multiple different typefaces. This is really hurting you here, in my opinion. And on your last call to action slide, this is screaming at me, it's telling me a whole bunch of different things. Comment below, get involved, give us some love, love the Edge team, save this for later. There's just way too much going on here. So my suggestion to you is to ask the audience to do one thing. Do you want them to comment? We'll make it about that. If you want them to save this for later or to, to like this post, just focus on one thing. All right, now on to the next one. The next one is from, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but maybe it's Melissa or Melisa. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Here we go. So you buy a cup of coffee from the same place every morning. So you buy a cup of coffee from the same place every morning. Maybe that's how I'm supposed to read it. Even when there are cheaper options out there, okay? There are those brands you purchase from over and over. Well, there's a good reason for it. We stay loyal to brands because of their values. Those values offer exceptional experiences and proud feeling for the customers and employees to associate with. The most visible medium for those values is a company's vision and mission statement. 
By staying true to the core values over the years, many of your customers and employees might stay loyal to you for life. Have you had your brand, core values, company vision, and mission clearly defined and implemented consistently? All right. Bunch of things here that we're going to need to unpack. I'm really not sure I understand what is being said here, and I'm not sure I agree with the message too. And the reason why is your whole premise is people are loyal to brands because of their mission statement and their and the vision. So let me ask you a question. What brands do you love that you feel most loyal to? Okay. Do you know what their mission statement is? Because I don't. What's Apple's mission statement? What's Nike's mission statement? That's the problem. So in a lot of cases, we buy things because of how those things or products and services make us feel about who we are and the tribes that we're joining. It is very important for you to have a clearly defined tribe or core values, but it's not going to be something that somebody's going to read. It's something that you have to live and that if you act and behave consistently to these values and you make decisions based on them, then people will develop an affinity for you. And this is usually communicated through a lot of messaging and every single touch point that the customer comes in contact with. So overall, in, in, in general here, I'm not sure that I agree with this and I'm not sure I agree with the even the call to action by asking people, do they have a clear mission statement? And you're not really telling them what to do or to think at that point. So if you say, if you don't have a clear mission statement, here are three things that you can do. At least then I have some actionable steps and I think then it will increase the value of your post. Speaking of a design point of view, I really like how this starts off. So it's got this dark kind of deep chocolate color with this light tan color. So it's feeling very coffee or chocolate inspired. And I really like the vibe. I also like that you have this coffee mug that's got this uh, nice little bubbles on the top and, and then it's split onto two screens. So really well done here. Okay. And there's an aesthetic here that you're establishing and, and also kind of a visual language. I also like the logo, the M O I believe, um, for Melissa, Melissa Oscar. I don't like that. I think that's really nice. It's tastefully done. It's a little bit bold, but it's it kind of disappears into the background for me. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, when you get to the third slide, this does not feel connected because this is like rich with photography, gradients, and nice lighting. And then this is a very two-dimensional, very graphic, uh, like a clipboard illustration here. And it's really throwing me off. What happened to the nice vibes from here? So this is one of those things where I think you have to really search hard to find the right imagery and make it consistent across the board. Not an easy thing, especially when we're not all illustrators and photographers, but that's a challenge that you have to solve. Okay, now I'm also finding a little disconnect here between the choice of images and the words, and this is not an easy thing to do. In this slide here, you're saying there are those brands you purchase from over and over but I don't see any brands here. I just see social media icons like likes and hearts and commenting. So this is more a, a thing to design to get attract attention on social media. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there. Well, there's a good reason for it, okay. Um, and then the rest of these slides feel pretty consistent again. So you brought us back. So it's telling me that slide three here is off and the one that needs some work. Whereas everything else feels really good and back on brand. There's other, one other typographic thing I want to point out here. The apostrophe for theirs, as in there is, that's not an apostrophe. That's a prime mark. You got to make sure you're using proper apostrophe and quote marks, okay? So I, I'm a stickler for this, so look out for this. And I also recently learned that the, I think they're called ellipses, these three dots, that the proper typesetting rule is to put a space before the, the ellipses. Now, the spacing is supposed to be consistent between the dots and the last letter. And right now, I think it's too close. I think you're supposed to put a space, but typographers, let me know if I got that right. Okay, I like this slide a lot. And I don't think you have to always put a lot of things on a slide to make it impactful and meaningful because this one has a nice use of two different colors, the browner color and this deeper, I think it's a deeper blue-gray color, and these little stars, and I think that's pretty cool. And you continue the stars over to the next slide, and I think, I think that's a nice use. 
Okay, I'm not sure. Uh, again, it's back to social media again, because every time I see these thumbs up, it feels like it's one of those social media icons and it's throwing me off again. Okay, so here we go. This is starting to feel like a different visual language again. It's the first time you're introducing the split screen with the white on top and the and the turquoise on the bottom. And we're now introducing even more colors. I think for one post like this, I would try to keep it within a family of colors unless these colors are your corporate colors, like your brand colors. And the only way I can tell is to look at the rest of your feed, okay? So I'm gonna caution you here, especially when you're all starting out and you wanna develop a strong visual identity. Stick to a handful of colors. I'm gonna say three colors with tints and shades and white and black. That should give you plenty of combinations of colors to use and to vary from. And you might go onto my feed and say, well, uh, Chris, you're not taking that advice. Yeah, I know I'm all over the place. But at this point, I, I think I'm doing okay with my followers. So when you're starting out, I think it's better for you to have a consistent color palette that you apply across your different posts, just so somebody gets to know you before you start trying other things. Okay, I like the, the imagery here that you chose in terms of stacking these pieces. Now, I'm gonna suspect here, and tell me if I'm wrong, that the reason why you chose this turquoise color is because this stock photo came on a turquoise background. This is where you're going to want to take the little bit of extra effort to cut this thing out quickly and then recolor the turquoise so it's back on brand and consistent with everything else. And that way, this image is not dictating the rest of your design decisions, okay? I also really like this question mark uh, inside the dialog bubble with the shadowing effect that you got. Really nice, it looks really good, so that's a handsome choice there. Okay, that's all I have for this. I hope I covered everything. Next up, we have Goran, so let's take a look. Okay, how to organize digital marketing projects. How to organize digital marketing projects. Okay, I wanna know. Okay, you have many projects and tasks on your plate, okay, or on your head in this case. You don't know how to deal with them. There is a limited time to finish all of them. You are stressed out. But I have a solution for you. Now pay attention to this. It's called Eisenhower Matrix or Important versus Urgent. The Eisenhower Decision Matrix looks something like this. And you break it down into four quadrants. Urgent, important, do it now. Not urgent and important, plan it. Urgent and not important, delegate it not urgent and not important, eliminate it. Do you need help with your digital marketing projects? Send me a message. Okay, so in looking at the structure of this, the meat of your presentation or your ideas right here inside this matrix. But if you don't know how to use this matrix, this isn't all that helpful. And I think the reason why is because you wanna force people to call you to kind of find out what this is about, but I don't like that as a strategy. My strategy would be to say, okay, so you have a lot of things that are stressing you out. The best thing you can do is to make a list of them and then to organize them according to the Eisenhower matrix. And here's where I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little confused by this. I think it should be, it should read, it's called the Eisenhower, the Eisenhower matrix. It's called Eisenhower matrix, sounds a little funny English to me. And again, if you guys have been paying attention, this is not an apostrophe, this is a prime mark. Let's get this set straight, guys. This should look different, all right? They, these things look different if you're using the correct ones. There's an angle to them, okay? So I think the way you build more value to this is actually to teach people how to use this and then how to organize and then show people, okay, based on this, do these tasks now and show it through the example of the first eight slides and not just lead it and leave it all on slide nine to explain everything, which it doesn't quite do. The last thing is I'm gonna be a little... Critical here, I don't love that uh, this is a, a carousel to sell something, at least not right away. Maybe over time, you can ask people to uh, or, or to, to give you a call for or to DM you for work, but I just think when you do it so quickly like this, um, and again, I don't have a lot of context here, so if you delivered 12 or 15 pieces of value and you finally pitch and ask for one, that's okay, that's, a, that's an all right ratio, but if every single one of your carousels is a hard pitch on hiring you to do something or DM me for, for work, I, I just don't love that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I'm, I'm just not feeling that, all right? So I, I would try to tell you, just first create value, build an audience, and then eventually they're gonna figure it out. They need help with digital marketing projects and they're gonna hire you. 
Okay, I want to take a quick break here and hand this over to our social media manager, El Money, to tell you more about later. Hey everyone, I'm Al Money, the social media manager for the future. And today I'd like to show you an awesome tool that makes my job so much easier. Honestly, it's got everything you need in one place. And as you might have guessed, the tool I'm talking about is Later. Later is a marketing platform that allows you to plan, publish and track your social media content. It's basically a one-stop shop when you have your content ready to go. So let's get to the good part. Here's how to use it. After logging into later.com, you'll be greeted with this calendar screen. This is the hub where you can upload your content, schedule it to be posted, and preview what it will look like on your feed. To schedule a post, simply click Upload Media and select your files. Once they're uploaded to Later's interface, you can select which images and videos you want to use in a post. As you probably know, we're huge fans of carousels at the future. So, to schedule a carousel post, simply select up to 10 images and videos and select multi-photo post. This will then bring up a pop-out window where you can add your caption, reshuffle the order of the content, add an external link, and schedule the date and time that you want the post to go live. When your post is ready, simply click Save. You'll then see it show up in the weekly or monthly view of your content calendar. The thing I love about Later here is you can click Preview to see what the post will look like on your grid once it's published. And speaking of being published, Later also has built-in analytics so you can keep track of your follower count, engagement rate, and other important marketing insights. So if you're ready to streamline your social media strategy, I would highly recommend checking out Later. And if you use the code FUTURE2020, you'll get access to a month-long growth plan completely free. Okay, thanks, Elle. Let's get back into it. Okay, the next up is Lisa. Here's Lisa's design. Freestyle your freelancing career. I like the way that sounds. Freestyle your freelancing career. How to find clients. Oh. Six ways to build your business before offering to work for free. Okay. Hmm. Find, okay, join groups to meet clients. Start by helping just one person. Friend. Oh, I see what's happening here. There's a few F things going on here. Find, friend, collaborate with others. Look for people in similar non-competing industries. All right. Forge online relationships to show your value. Form, create value packages. Favor, ask for referrals let clients know you're available. Flip your perception. Stop calling yourself a freelancer. You're a consultant. Only then, free. Offer to work for free in your chosen field. Choose projects beneficial to you. Okay, so don't make excuses. Choose three, make a plan, set some deadlines, and get and getting going. Design inspiration, constructivism, fond avant-garde, comment below. Post in the comments, uh, post in the comments the three strategies you plan to Im implement to get work. Okay, so there's free, flip, favor, form, forge, friend, and find. I see, so six, okay. All right, all right, so first of all, I just want to comment on something. I'm, I'm gonna go in reverse order here. I'm gonna talk about the X factor. So Lisa, you did an incredible job of design. And when I swipe through this, I, I see that you know how to design because it's not easy to have this many elements and these, these many components competing for your attention, but yet still manage not to make it feel cluttered and crazy. And this is some pretty, uh, I think, really cool design. As you mentioned, it's inspired by Russian constructivism and it's really, really cool. So I appreciate that, I like that. If all your posts look like this, I think it would make for a pretty amazing feed to follow, okay? So freestyle your freelancing career. So it also seems like you're a pretty good writer with alliteration, freestyle your freelancing career, how to find, so a lot of Fs in there. I think that's cool. Six ways to build your business before offering to work for free, okay? So this is where I think this is actually the headline, the first slide, six ways to build your business before offering to work for free, not this. And then I would go right into it. So let's let's lose slide one, this is what I'm thinking. Now, if we had the opportunity to, I would just rearrange the artboard and kind of see how it flows, right? I'm not gonna do that right now, but I would experiment with that. And that's why I love working in Keynote, it's so easy to change page order. Okay, so fine, join groups, this is all good. I like this. 
She's also using type in perspective here, and I can see there's some aliasing going on in that because it's probably done in Photoshop. So it's a little tweaked here and there, but okay, I get it. Form, okay, favor. Maybe she's European because the way she spells favor here is a little different than the American spelling of it. Okay, you'll notice here in the word your, the contraction your, she's using a prop, she's using a proper apostrophe here. You can see that it's not just like a vertical stick. So kudos to you for, for doing that. Again here, your, the contraction, looks good. Nice design. Okay, so I think here in the end, there's a lot that's going on and you're, you're trying to distill a lot. So if we got rid of slide number one, you could probably use that extra slide somewhere for nine and 10 to kind of break this up so it's not so much information on one slide. So what I would do is do the summary, don't make excuses, choose three of the six to, to plan, and maybe you do a little recap and, and just do the, the six Fs again, okay? And then your last slide would be this one, without all this other information on it. So I would just put your face, comment below, and, and tell me what your comments, uh, or tell me what your three strategies are in the comments, and that's it. So to break this apart, sometimes we can get carried away. We forget that people are just trying to process it for the very first time, and it's too much information for us to absorb. Good job overall, very nice design. Next up we have Amy. Let's take a look at Amy's work, which is really different. How to use calligraphy in layout design. Start with a clean layout without other strong images. Think of it like a blankish canvas on which to showcase your calligraphy bling. <laughs> so this is one of those mashup words that I'm having a hard time saying. Instead of saying calligraphy, it's bing ling. Okay, I, I can't do that. Okay, use the grid. If you haven't yet learned about the grid, okay. And then learn to break the grid by overlapping elements. All right. Use calligraphy sparingly to put a spotlight on your subject. Remember, if everything stands out, nothing stands out. Well, I believe that, okay? Choose a simple font who will know its place and whose shapes contrast with your script. Classic fonts, Futura, Helvetica, Din are bold and clean, but diverse enough to play second fiddle to your art. Use contrast to make it interesting. Size, color, shape, texture, etc. So here, here's a summary. In a nutshell, use the grid for a strong layout. Choose one script. Use it sparingly. If everything stands out, nothing does. Pair your calligraphy with a simple font and add contrast to add interest. Thanks for reading. So tell me, what's your biggest struggle with calligraphy? In or out of the digital world? I'll answer your questions in the future, in future posts. Okay, very nice. All right, let's go back here. All right, using something as decorative as calligraphy, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is hand done because it looks pretty unique. I'm not sure though, but uh, I, I think uh, choosing Futura to contrast against hand-drawn calligraphy, I think that's a really smart choice. I think the color palette and, and how stark everything is actually helps here. So using all caps, blue, bold, Futura next to this orange calligraphy lettering that you've done and leaving a lot of white space around it actually makes this very pleasing to look at. So the whole the whole messaging here is to obey certain rules about restraint using grids, minimal colors, and um, a lot of negative space and a grid and, and simple typefaces will help you pair a tricky typeface or a, a tricky thing that requires so much attention as calligraphy. So I, I think you've done a really smart thing here. Um, I think your more successful design and comp compositions that explain these concepts are actually in this slide here, but not so much this slide, because I find that you cutting off the G and cutting off the space in half actually gives you a lot less space to work with and feels a lot more claustrophobic to me. I think you're much better off using this kind of template with the large white block that's a square and the blue ribbon at the bottom is probably your best way to go. Those are the most pleasing uses of this. Now, I also notice you're using at least three weights of Futura. So you have Futura Bold here, Futura Medium or Regular, and then you have Futura Light. 
I, I think the medium weight works. When it gets light, I, I think it's starting to feel a little too dainty for me. Uh, and that's just a personal preference, okay? I think you can easily do that with this and make it look nicer. Uh, especially against the flourishes of the calligra calligraphic typeface that you've, you've drawn. Again, I, I, I like this best when I, I, I think there's a lot of white in here so that the, the, the lettering and the, your, your messaging can really pop. So the blue and orange on top of each other, it feels really heavy all of a sudden because it's so dark. I also don't love these extra little things that you've added here. So this is the first time I think I'm seeing this underline, the arrow. And I, I think it's because you're trying to tie these two ideas together uh, in, in terms of it playing second fiddle. See, if we swipe across here, we can see that, the second fiddle. And, and sometimes our desire to connect two slides actually forces us to compromise. And, and right now, I just think if you add an arrow, I would prefer it if you drew that by hand and added some texture to it so it felt it feels consistent with what's going on. I, I don't love having a third kind of design language in here, and I think that's what's happening there. I like the summary. Uh, I'm going to give you a note here. I want you to try to do something. I want you to reduce the interline spacing, otherwise known as letting, to tighten it up a little bit because it feels a little bit too open for me. And then to also reduce the distance between break, paragraph breaks. Uh, there's just too much space and it, it's not feeling like a cohesive group. Something interesting will happen here. If you space things really far out from a design point of view, it'll feel like separate elements versus one big group. And the whole point of a bullet pointed list is to make it feel like a group. So reduce the interline spacing, the letting, and also reduce the paragraph spacing between each bullet point to make this feel like one group. Otherwise, it starts to feel really complicated. Instead of looking at, at, at two things, I'm looking at six things in a nutshell, and each bullet point is a separate thing. Okay. I really like the cropping uh, of your of your face here. It's really creating some some interesting visual tension. I like that you're using a lot of white space. It's an excellent photo, by the way. It shows so much personality. In in one of the other carousels that we just looked at, uh, I didn't see a lot of personality. And here I see it. It's a good photo. It's got really good rendering of your face. It's highlighting your cheeks and separating your jawline. You've got this big poof of hair on the uh, on top and the glasses. And I think that's that's everything for me. Um, what I don't love here is everything else that you put on the page. So maybe this is the time to like leave, leave the calligraphy out and just say thanks for reading. Just treat everything else really simple and make it a lot smaller. So you can be the hero in this shot. And then tell them to make a comment and that's it. So I would remove the bookmark. It's hard to see the bookmark anyways against your shirt and, uh, and, and just simplify it. That's it. Okay. Good job. Next up we have Sarah. Okay. Looking to make a big jump, but too afraid. Did you know elephants are the only animals that can't jump? I did not know that. They don't have the spring required to push off the ground. That does make sense because they're really big and heavy but you do, you do. Okay, taking a big jump requires a leap of faith. Here's how. Okay, this is a lot of text here. It's so much text, I don't even wanna read it all. But you've included five bullet points here, all right? So you never know what you're getting in, wait, you never know what you're getting into when you fall in love, but that doesn't mean you avoid the jump. Crystal Sestari. Like and share with anyone that is looking to make a big jump, but is too scared. Okay, a couple things here. I, I, I like the overall general design, the boldness of the typeface choice, the color com uh, combination of this indigo color with this very faded out, desaturated orange maybe. And I don't know, uh, maybe a camel color. I like that. I think you, you ran into the problem with putting too much information on one slide. And if it were me just flipping through this, I would stop here and just not read anymore. Now that's a shame because this is where all the meat is. This is where the value is. So what you have to do is unpack this and perhaps break this across five slides. This is way too much to consume. And, and think about this. I want a satisfying but light meal. I don't want a full three course meal and be very heavy and fall asleep. You have to understand, people are not Instagram with the intention of reading the long blocks of copy. For that, they have many other places to go. So you wanna break complex ideas like this across multiple slides. So 
this slide really should take, I think, five slides, which means maybe some of this other information doesn't need to be broken out as far as it, as it is, right? So, I mean, you could even start the carousel here. Did you know? And just make this really big. Like, know what? Elephants are only animals that can't jump. Okay, so I think there are some opportunities here for you to link slides together. Sometimes when you have a big shape like this, like the elephant, it'd be nice actually to carry the elephant's back legs over to the other slide. And I like this size of uh, Futura for what you're doing, like this really big and bold use of Futura, okay? Um, there's a couple other things here that I noticed. The, the capitalization is all over the place. So here it's all caps. Here it's title casing, title casing, sentence casing, sentence casing. It's a combination of title and all caps. So it's a little bit funky. To me, I think this is the typeset here. So I would base all of your carousels based on this point size, this weight, and this amount of uh, space that's being occupied. I would do it like that because this feels really good. This is easy to read. It feels really bold. It's a nice use of colors and uh, mixing between the camel or the light orange color with the, the white, I think it's, it feels really refreshing to me. So that it might also mean that the elephant shouldn't be this pink and blue color, this powder blue. Uh, so let's work on that. I think what we want to do is get all our, our design components to, to harmonize with each other and not to feel like separate elements so that so that uh, they feel as almost if you've commissioned a photographer to take this photo and you've spent a lot of time crafting and manipulating this so it all comes together, okay? So uh, I, again, this looks really handsome. Uh, this typeset doesn't because it's all across um, uh, on one line, whereas this stacking of three to four lines actually looks really good. And then really break this information across on multiple slides. Okay, so there's a quote here, and uh, Futura, uh, it's, I, I, I know people think that it's great for body copy. I, I don't personally. I, I, it's mostly good for headlines like this. So you may want to pick a secondary typeface that is a nice complement to Futura, which is really legible. So maybe try that and see what happens, okay? And uh, your call to action here is very simple. Uh, like and share with anyone that is looking to make a big jump but is, is too scared. Um, and your initials, and the little heart. I think that looks really nice. It, it communicates a friendliness and something that is highly approachable. Okay, thanks for your submission. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful and that it gave you some ideas on what you can do to make better content. So be on the lookout for part two whenever you some more submissions. That's it for me. See you guys next time. If you're interested in learning how to create Instagram content like this, check out my workshop. Details with the links in the description below.